Hey there my good friends, we're going to embark on a whole series of videos all about how to customize the HTML video controls interface. Now if you run an experiment and you put up HTML5 video tag on your page and you're playing a video, you can go to that page with Chrome, Internet Explorer and Firefox and guess what, you're going to get a different look for the interfacing for that video. I don't know why they do that and they keep putting differences in all these browsers and I'm gonna punch them in the face but it doesn't matter because we're gonna show you how to customize it to where it looks the same no matter if the user is in Firefox Internet Explorer Chrome and plus you might own a site like Barbie.com and you might have to have an all pink video control bar so you just knock out the default controls and you customize your nice new pink control bar with pink buttons and it can be totally pink or maybe you're somebody who sells guns and you want like a, a metal steel looking controls or whatever you want you can make a look at whatever you want and it don't matter what browser the person's coming in this first video I'm gonna show you how to knock out the default controls put in a div that's gonna serve as our new control bar and I'll show you how to program the pause and play button to where it changes its look or the words that would be on it depending on whether or not the video is playing or not you know what I mean so when you press play it should turn to a pause symbol when you press pause that same button should turn to a play symbol and that's what we'll be covering in video number one let's go and we're gonna start with the bare bones we're gonna put our CSS here in the style element our JavaScript is gonna go in the script element and our HTML is gonna go into the body element so the first thing we'll do is pop a video tag into the page and this is how you would just get the default controls by saying controls equals controls or I think you can just have it say controls like that and you'll still get the controls and you just want to make sure that you have a video file sitting in the same folder with this file if you want to refer to it in a videos folder you can just go videos forward slash and then get to that file so let me press F12 and we'll see what we get so you can see I get a video with the default controls here this can even say controls equals controls and you'll get the same effect refresh that page see you have the controls and you can see how the controls work in which when you press pause that turns to a play symbol when you press play it turns to a pause symbol you see that press pause and it turns back to a play symbol we have cool things like the seek bar the time duration volume mute control and of course the volume slider here and then you have your full screen button if I press full screen you see it goes into full screen mode so those are some of the controls that we are going to be customizing because if you look at this same file let's close this and look at the same file in Internet Explorer you're gonna see that you have a totally different look to the controls and you might want to have the same exact player controls look from one browser to the next and now in case somebody asks you can just put autoplay into the tag and then when you test that you'll see that the video plays by itself you don't have to press play all right so we'll have our default player set up just like that now let's knock out the controls so if you test this in your favorite browser you'll see you have no control over the video now and you can actually leave the controls in while you're programming new controls if you want to have those controls available while you're testing and programming but when you're done you just remove the controls attribute now let's give this video tag or this video element an ID equal to my underscore video and now right under the video we're going to put our own control bar and that's going to be a div element that's going to be the containing box for all of the controls that we're going to add so, so the first thing we'll add to that div is a button element make sure we close that button element and since our video is set to autoplay the default thing that we want our button to say is pause because the video is going to be autoplaying if you didn't have autoplay set here this would say play now let's give our little control bar an actual ID of video controls bar now let's give our play pause button an ID equal to play pause button 
And since this element is going to control the playing and pausing of our video, we're going to give it an on click event. So every time it's clicked, we're going to fire off a function in JavaScript named play pause. Open close parentheses, and we're going to send two arguments through this function. The first argument is going to be this. This represents whatever element that is calling the function to run. So in our case, it's going to be this button element. So this is a parameter or an argument that we're going to pass through the function, and it's going to be the object reference for this button element. Then we put a comma, and in between single quotes, we're going to put the string that represents the ID of our video player right there as the second argument. So two arguments are passing through this play pause function. So let's just copy all that, control C, and go up into our JavaScript, and we're going to type in function, and then paste. Open a curly brace and go down a couple of lines and put in your closing curly brace. Now we're going to scoop up those two parameters, not as this and my video. We're going to scoop it up as btn and vid. That way we can have access to those two things. Now since we already have an object reference for the button element, let's get an object reference now for that video ID string. So let's use document.getElementById on that video ID string to make a variable, an object reference named vid. And that's going to represent this video element right here. Now right under that, we want an if and else condition statement. So we type in if, open close parentheses, open in curly brace, go down, put in closing curly brace, and then put else, open in curly brace, and closing curly brace. Now we want to evaluate to see if vid.paused is equal to true. Paused is a property that you can access for a video element on the page to see whether or not it's paused. So this will return either true or false, whether or not it's paused. So if it is paused, we want the vid to dot play. We're going to instruct that video to play if it happens to be paused when that button is clicked. Else, we want vid dot pause if it happens to be playing when that button is clicked. And since this button says pause by default, when it's instructed to pause, we want to change what that says to play. So we're going to say btn.innerHTML is equal to play, semicolon. And then if it happens to be paused when that button's clicked and the video is instructed to play, you then want to change that to say pause again. Okay, does that make sense? So if the video is paused, you want to make the video play and change the button to show the word pause. Else, if the video is playing, then you want to pause the video and show the button to say the word play. Now, I'm going to talk to you guys in a minute on how you can create actual graphics for a little play button icon and pause button icon. And I might even show you how to go into fireworks and create those. And then we'll use those instead of these words pause and play. But I just wanted to show you the logic, the programming logic behind changing that word or the graphics according to whether it's paused or playing or whatever. And this is the, the base logic of doing all that. To change an element's uh, background image is very simple. So that's probably what we'll do is we'll change the button's background image. We might even make that button an A element, a link tag, and just use CSS to make it look like a button. I'm not sure yet. Okay, now let's highlight this video controls bar ID. Press control C and go up into your CSS and type in div pound sign to represent that we're using the ID of videos control bar. So we're targeting a div with an ID of videos control bar. Open curly brace, close curly brace. And this we want to give, let's give it a background color. We'll use maybe a, a dark gray like that. You can use any color you want. And let's also give it a padding so that our little controls inside of it aren't all smushed up against the edges. So we'll pad it about 10 pixels on all sides. Now your video's control bar should have a background that's gray, some padding on it, and inside of it is going to be that button. You can also use the ID for that button right there to control that the way it's styled in your CSS. And like I said, this can also be an A tag if you want instead of a button. But really you can use any kind of element that you want right there. It could also be a div Okay, so now let's run this on our favorite browser and see what we get. Press pause, and you see that the button changes to the play state. And if you hit play now, 
the video will start playing and the button will say pause. So you see? That's the logic you want. And we kept the controls up here just so we can still have access to those and see what we need to mimic about this little control interface. Now I'm going to tidy all of these things up into one container box and I'm going to call that video player box or something like that so that I can center or position this video with its control bar, custom control bar, directly under it anywhere I want on the page. So basically the custom control bar and the video element are going to be contained in a box now. So let's go ahead and collapse this JavaScript since we don't really need to look at that anymore right now. We're going to do lots more JavaScript programming regarding this video element in the videos that follow. So what we'll do is go into our body element here and let's see we need to wrap the video and the controls bar. So let's put a new div. Make sure we go under those two elements and close that div. So anything inside of that div make sure you indent so you don't lose your place with your elements and anything in those elements indent as well. So this new div that we used as a container for everything, let's just give that an ID equal to video player box. We can copy that ID and go up here into our CSS, type in div pound video player box, and we can center that by giving it a width. So since we want our video to be our video player to be 550, let's make that the width of the box. 550 pixels and these can be any size you want let's just put a background background color black or whatever color you want and I'm also gonna center that in the page so if you look at it right now in your favorite browser you'll see that everything looks a little bit more like a video player it's contained in a, in a nice uh, box now to where that video bar that control bar wasn't going all the way across the screen Now, if you want to center that or put this whole element anywhere you want you can use positioning in CSS you can float it or if you just want it centered in the page you can use margin zero pixels auto and just for demonstration purposes I'm just gonna center it so you see now if I remove my controls temporarily you'll see that we have no default controls and all we get is our play pause button here. Now let's take a look at that again. There's certain things that you'll notice about the default controls that you get that are nice effects. For instance, when your mouse leaves the video player, this little bar will totally disappear. It will kind of fade away. And then when your mouse goes back over the video element, your little control bar comes back in. So, so what I'll be doing in videos that follow this one, showing you guys how to get this control bar up into the video element a little bit will set an opacity to this control bar so we can see through it a little bit and see the video behind it and we'll make it to where when your mouse goes over and away from the video element that little control bar will come into view and then go away just like it should and that's something that you have to program we can use CSS3 for those if we want to have fade animations on it or whatever we can use CSS3 we don't need any third-party libraries you don't need jQuery or anything like that to custom control all of this video customization and stuff okay so we'll leave it right there and I, like I said the videos that follow this one will show you how to do a lot more things that are expected to be in a videos control bar So if you guys want to see more let me know exactly what you want to know how to customize in the control bar let me know what features that you might like to see in it or whatever but we'll definitely do all of the basics like volume control the seek bar and all that stuff Okay, I hope you've enjoyed this part one of customizing the HTML5 video controls interface. And we'll go a lot further if you guys want to.